Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today we are continuing our Pythagoras and Trigonometry series by looking at compass bearings. And this particular video is aimed at students in grades 9 and above. In this particular video we're going to find out firstly what compass bearings are and then we're going to get straight into a worked example. If you're wanting more worked examples they'll be coming up in our future videos when we look at some complex problems that combine compass bearings with true bearings as well as trigonometry. So firstly, you might be wondering what is a compass bearing? Well, these are also called conventional bearings. They were typically read off a compass, which is an instrument for navigation and orienteering, as well as for finding your general direction. And in these particular types of bearings, we communicate these using our north-south line. So here is our traditional compass. Um, people often use the um, little phrase, never eat soggy wheat bix to remember how to put the order. Okay, so we never eat soggy weeks, north, east, south, and west. We go around in that direction. Okay, so um, the north-south line is our very important um, part for starting our navigation because we always communicate the angle between this line and the east-west line. I'll give you some examples in a moment. So for example, if I have a compass bearing of north 50 degrees east, what that means is it's a bearing from north all the way towards east. By 50 degrees. That angle between north and the bearing itself is 50 degrees. In the same way, north 45 degrees west is simply north. You start at north and you go 45 degrees towards the west and that is your north 45 degrees west bearing. So you can see that the very first letter of these bearings is either going to be a north or a south and the last letter is either an east or a west and that angle in between is always the angle from the first letter to the second letter. Okay, so our next one is south 20 degrees west. So once again, we start at south this time and we move towards the west by 20 degrees. And if we've got south 70 degrees east, it's once again, we start at south. So starting point is the first letter and move towards the other letter by 70 degrees. Fairly straightforward. Let's try it with a worked example. So we've got a boat, it's leaving a port and it travels due east for eight kilometers and then due south for five kilometers. So we wanna know the compass bearing of the boat from the port. So we're gonna follow Polya's C plan do check problem solving model again today. And we're gonna start with C by identifying our key information. We've got some information about the directions it's traveled, how far it traveled, and the words compass bearing are important because in our future videos, we're gonna be looking at true bearings. So you need to know what kind of bearings you're looking at today. In this case, compass bearings. And it's the bearing from the um, of the boat from the port. So the port is our starting place. And from the port, we're looking out to the boat and measuring a direction. That's important, the from part, because we could have actually looked at the um, compass bearing of the port from the boat. So just bear in mind, bear, pardon the pun, that you can go in either direction. The from, you need to imagine yourself standing at that position and looking out to the other part. So we've got our key information. Let's start by drawing a picture. So we start at our port and we travel due east. Now when you see the word due east, that means exactly east. Okay, so it's going in the perfectly easterly direction and it's going in that direction for eight kilometers. If you don't have the word due there, if it just says it travels in an easterly direction, that means it could be traveling east, sort of northeast, or it could even be traveling southeast. So in this case, exactly east for eight kilometers. And then our boat changes direction and goes due south, due south meaning exactly south. So because east and south are both exact lines, part of our compass, we're actually making a right angle when we travel exactly east and then change direction to go exactly south. So there's our right angle right there. Now the next part is that we are wanting our compass bearing from the port to the boat. So you'll notice that the arrow this time isn't going back to the port because the boat hasn't actually traveled back to port. It's still out in the middle of the ocean. We are now looking at the port out to the boat and trying to work out what its bearing is from the port. Okay, so now I've said here, add a compass if needed. The reason why I've done this is because I need to get a bearing from this port section here. And what that means is I'm actually going to need a north-south line to be able to calculate a bearing. So I'm actually going to put that little north-south in there and you might be wondering, well, that's outside the triangle. How am I going to work out any angles when it's outside the triangle? Well, remember, this is the angle we're trying to find in here, which is our bearing from the port to the boat. 
and remember our parallel line rules. We talked about these in a previous video. So parallel lines have this particular line down here, this diagonal makes a Z angle with our particular diagram. So we can actually now work out this angle here that we're trying to find, which is our bearing, is actually this angle here inside the triangle. So now we've got a triangle, a right angle triangle, we can do some very basic trigonometry with that and find theta, our unknown angle. Okay, so we need to choose a formula. Well, if we look at where theta is inside the triangle and we look at our triangle at the information that we have, well, we've got an opposite, that's the eight kilometers. We've also got an adjacent, which is our five kilometers. So opposite, adjacent, think of Sokotoa, T-O-A, we're going to be using the tan formula, which is opposite over adjacent. Now do remember, it's not enough to just write Sokotoa. Sokotoa is a memory tool, not a formula. So writing Toa is not enough. You actually need to write the formula. Tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. And now we're going to substitute our information from our diagram into our formula. So we've got eight over five, opposite over adjacent. And we're trying to get theta all by itself. You remember a few videos back, we looked at how to find unknown angles and we take the inverse of tan on both sides of the triangle. That's 10 to the power of minus one. If we put that in our calculator now, we're gonna find that theta is 58 degrees. Now, you need to remember, that's this angle here inside the triangle. We actually wanted a bearing which was outside of the triangle. Okay, so we've got here this 58 degrees. Remember the theta was the same in the triangle and out of the triangle because of parallel lines. We've got this north-south line here and a north-south line here as well. So if you remember now, when we talk about compass bearings, we're going from south or from north in the other direction. So it's on the south quadrant, it's not in the north quadrant. So the first letter of our bearing is gonna be S for south. And then we're moving towards the east by 58 degrees. So our compass bearing is going to be south 58 degrees east. Okay, now it's very important we use our units of measurement properly. We are measuring an angle, so we definitely need the degree symbol. And it's not enough to just write 58 degrees as your final answer because that could be north 58 degrees east, north 58 degrees west, south 58 degrees west. We wanna be really precise, it's south 58 degrees east. Well, that's all we have time for in this video. It was nice and short and sweet. Next time, we're gonna be looking at true bearings and we might even bring in compass bearings with true bearings and do some conversions between the two. Now, if you found this video helpful, why not tell a friend or your teacher, like and subscribe to the channel, hit that notifications bell and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Just look for McClutchy Maths on there to get little updates on when things are coming out, tips, tricks, memes and competitions. And in our future videos, we are not only going to look at true bearings, we're going to look at the sine rule and the cosine rule. We're going to bring all of that content together with some content problems. That's going to be especially for our students in grade 10 prep methods or in year 11 general maths or maths applications in Western Australia. And then we're going to move on to some of our advanced mathematics unit circle and trig functions. Well, I'd like to say thank you so much to our ongoing subscribers. And if you're a new subscriber here today, welcome. And if you have any questions about anything you've seen in this video, or we would like to suggest a future video, you can contact me at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com. Well, I'd like to say thank you again for joining me. Have a wonderful day.